Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Annabeth and if you are new here, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for joining me again. Um, so this video that I have for you today is going to be kind of a part two in the little vlog series that I'm doing in learning how to use my, let me show you, my Dean and Bean sock machine. So um, in the last video, I kind of took you through setting up the little stand table desk thing that I got for it and then unpacking the actual machine and all of its parts and tools and accessories itself. So that was part one. If you haven't watched that yet, feel free to. It's on my channel. Um, so today for part two, um, I had a little bit of time today. It's also New Year's Day, so Happy New Year, Happy 2024. Um, take that as you will. <laughs> I had a little bit of time today, so I am going to go through some of the next few steps in setting up, getting to know my machine a little bit, and preparing myself some more to continue working with, or to not continue, to start working with it, really. Um, so, one thing I was super excited to do that I've actually done already, I did it off camera, sorry guys. I wound up some um, yarn that I'm going to use to practice cranking. Um, so this is just some loops and threads wool-like from Michael's. Um, it's a 100% acrylic fingering weight yarn. Um, it comes in these balls of like maybe 300 gram balls. I don't know. They have a lot of yardage um, on them and I've used these for like gift socks before or I recently just used this yarn for all of the rats that I made for my coworkers as their holiday gift. Um, I talk about that in some other videos as well. So um, I just went ahead and I used the little... Where'd it go? There it is. I'm knocking everything over. I used the cone winding attachment and my dad showed me how to attach it to one of his power drills so I could wind up this cone of yarn. So that is something I did in between these two. So sorry for not taking you on that journey with me, but it really wasn't that exciting. <laughs> there were no problems really. So I got that all wound up just because it was something I could do real quick. So then looking at... Um, one reason I got a Dean and Bean machine is because I knew they had a ton of resources on their website to help people who might be new to sock machines or just new to their machines in general, like set up, take care of it, get used to using it, all of that good stuff. So where we left off last week was um, in the unpacking and setting up little list here um I just like figured out okay here's how I clamp it to the table here's how these two pieces go together here's how you attach the crank like I figured all of that out so next up is to mark the cylinders so that's what I'll be doing I have I took apart I took the foot gear foot gear floor gear floor gear I think I took the floor gear off of my machine and got my 60 needle cylinder out and then I also have my 64 and my 72 needle cylinder and the next step to kind of prep your cylinders for cranking is to mark them. So they have some great diagrams and I got some sharpies to mark the cylinders here so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Okay so looking at the... let me zoom in a little more. 60 needle cylinder. They have the main mark marked for you already. That's that um, black lip. I'm actually going to extend that though because they recommend making it really easy to see to extend it all the way down the top part of the fin of the cylinder. So it kind of looks like that. So that way it's a very clear mark no matter what angle you might be looking at it from. Okay, so that's the main mark. And then it says for the main mark, you want that at like three o'clock. So as I'm looking at it, it's at three o'clock. 
and then you're gonna count five needles and the wedge heel mark will be next if I'm going counterclockwise. So one, two, three, four. Oh wait, five needles though, not five fins. So one, two, three, four, five needles in between that mark. Oh, I made that in green instead of making it in blue. Hmm. Oh well, I guess blue will be my halfway now. Okay, so that's my first mark for a wedge heel. So then next I should make red. So it's five needles. Keep this There we go. Five needles. One, two, three, four, five. And then it's a target mark. I trust we'll learn what these target marks are for. We'll learn in the future as well. They said they normally use nail polish for their marks, but you could also use permanent marker unless you got like a dark colored cylinder. And I just got the regular white cylinder, so I actually need red again. I should be fine, I think. And also, if I use Sharpie on this and I mess up, I can take it off with, um, with like an Expo marker. Use that little Expo marker hat that I know as a, as a former teacher. <laughs> well, as a trained teacher. Um, anyway, I'm getting off track. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten needles. So here's my mark. One thing I'm noticing, I think because it's the cylinder and everything is like 3D printed. So if you know anything about 3D printing, you know it's kind of like printed in layers. Um, so actually, if you look at the side, you can kind of see how the markers seeping between the layers, but I think that's okay. I think it's fine. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If nothing else, I could probably get that out with a little rubbing alcohol, if need be. I shouldn't need to though. Okay, next is another wedge heel mark. So let me grab my green. <laughs> So then, if I did it correctly, there should be another 10 between this last mark and the main mark. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Perfect! Alright, so that is one cylinder marked. I'm gonna go ahead and mark the other two, but y'all don't really need to sit through another however many minutes of me doing that. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead and I'll see you once I've marked all of these for the next step. Alright, so I have marked up, this is my 72 needle cylinder, my 60 and then my 64 needle cylinder. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my 72 and 64 back underneath for now. And since this, since my 60 was the one that came like already inside the machine and so I know it is already, um, a little like greased up and stuff I'm just gonna go ahead and put it back in my machine and that'll be the one I do the next couple of steps in so let me go ahead and lower you so you can kind of see what I'm doing it'll probably cut off my face but that's okay um oh I actually duh this is the whole reason I got this type of desk I should just it up a little bit. There we go. Alright, going back to original height. Stop sliding around. There we go. Now you can see me and my machine. What a concept. Alright, so this has to go back into the machine. So we gotta put the floor gear back up in place, hold that I just realized you 
couldn't see anything that I'm just doing. It looks like I'm just staring at my machine right now, but it's fine. <laughs> Cylinders placed, bolts are tightened. She's not coming out. All right, so the next step after marking the cylinders was to add the needles to your cylinder and it's really straightforward how to do this so i have my little baggie of compound needles here and i have um my uh latch tool that's what this is called so it's the one that's kind of like not quite an l but close it's like a kind of like a 45 degree L. Not quite a J either, because it's not really rounded. Anyway, I digress. So here are the little needles. So they have like their little foot at the bottom and then just a little latch hook there. So that's kind of what they look like. And to put them in, I don't think there was a specific place I needed to start. No, she just kind of started wherever. Okay, so to put it in, I use my latch tool and I pull the cylinder band forward a little bit. You can't really see what I'm doing, can you? Let me go on this side. Pull the band forward. My hand's blocking it now. This is why I shouldn't do vlog type videos. Whatever, you pull the band forward with the latch tool you stick it in horizontally and then you kind of like just rotate it around the spring and push it down and that's it and the rest of them you don't really need the latch tool for because you can just use the adjoining not adjoining adjacent hooks to put the rest of them in so let's do that and let's not try and drop these on the floor Okay, so all the needles are placed and they seem to be operating well. Um, now I want my main mark to get like lined up with the row counter there. There we go. Um, okay, let's see what the next step is for adding. Okay, so I don't need to do anything about an upgraded cam shell because I bought the 2.0 machine, so I don't need to worry about that. I don't have a color work mask, don't have a ribber, so I'm done with that checklist. So let's go over to, okay, I can close that tab with the cylinder markings. Um, parts of your Dean and Beans sock machine. Okay, I've looked at this a little bit. Um, so this is the box, the like main base part is the box. The box knees are what are the two front parts that the that clamp it to the table. I'm not gonna go through this whole list. You don't need a whole lecture about the different parts of the sock machine. I have looked at this list a little bit already as well. So I kind of understand what the different parts are, like this little orange piece. This little orange piece here is the row counter. It's by magnet, so that's kind of cool. Um, you're just gonna stay there with the top of my head being cut off. Um, I've already had to change the battery in that, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, v cams and flippers. Okay, so that's these parts here. I'll read more about that in a bit. Um, yep, floor gear, gear. It is the floor gear, not the foot gear. Um, Main mark, yep, yep, learned how to change the cylinder, yep, learned how to lubricate everything. I do have some uh, dry lube coming soon from, I just ordered it from Amazon because the one that my friend Rachel 
who you probably know from Rachel is Knitting, um, the one that she recommends was not in stock at my local Home Depot and then the closest, the other closest Home Depot or the closest Lowe's was a bit further than I felt like traveling <laughs> the past couple of days outside of work. Like if I leave my house, I wanna go to the Home Depot that's like not even 10 minutes away. So I just ordered it from Amazon. Sorry guys. Um, so that's coming soon. Um, okay, so the next few are um, kind of like understanding how it knits which is good because like I understand kind of like the anatomy of a knit stitch you know like how it's a loop that kind of comes out of another loop um but I definitely like want to understand the mechanics of the machine a little bit more just looking at it now I can kind of see like okay that's the part um what did I call it the cams the v cams is that right um where so it like brings the needle up one side uh, the flipper helps like keep the needles going in the same direction and then it goes down the other side and when it's lifting up it grabs the yarn and then when it goes back down it loops the yarn through the yarn that was already there so I kind of understand that a little bit I will check out these videos though to like make sure I'm not missing anything um Definitely we'll read through this next and then let's see what these other ones are. Tools and accessories. Okay, I, I read through most of this a bit too, but I'll need a refresher. And caring for your machine. I have read through that one a bit more. Okay, so I, you don't need a video of me reading through a web page. So I'm going to go ahead and pause here and check back in in a little bit. Okay, after reading through that and watching some of the videos about like how the machine does knit stitches and stuff, I'm feeling pretty good. So I think today I am going to attempt to cast on with the setup bonnet for my 60 needle uh, cylinder. So working through, I'm just gonna kind of like go along with um, the video here that's from their web page. So it started with um, starting off with one of the needles. Let me check which one she started with. Okay, so I start right past the yarn feeder and then I put a split ring on every other needle. So is it really bad? Yeah, it's really bad. One thing I remember is um, you want to make sure like the latches are open when it's not actively grabbing the yarn. So I guess this is a good time to make sure it's doing that. Oh, every other, not every. Every other. What do I do when I get to the lower ones? Tell me. I forgot to watch the video on how to um, load my yarn in the yarn mess, so let's go find that one. Um, okay. Yarn. I know it doesn't go there, but still. Okay. I went and watched the yarn loading video and so now I have that all loaded so that's all ready to go and then I need to drop in the medium weight. Put the rest of those down there. Put that in there. That's not at all nerve-wracking to put a giant weight in inside a little knitted tube. Alright so we did that. So then I have to start and make sure each needle is catching, which I think it is. Ah! Alright, alright, what's next? What's next? Okay, so now that the rest of the split rings are like past, um, 
like all the needles for them are available. I can put the rest of them up on there. Every other needle. There we go. Okay, and then do I just start cranking? Let's see. Okay, so now I go and do one full row. Around. All right, that was a little bit more than one row, but all the hooks are staying open, which I know is important for them to catch the yarn. All the split rings are now off their needles. Ooh, did I drop one there? Oh, I think I did. All right, interesting. But I think I can fix that. Because I want it to look like the others. So I think I can pick this guy up. here we go okay and it looks like all of its friends no it doesn't i put it on the wrong side dang it okay that's okay but i successfully fixed it just the opposite way it needs to go but that's all right and this is why I use my not as expensive yarn to learn all of this okay so it needs to go instead of over it needs to go under <laughs> There we go, that's laying the right way. Okay, took a little trial and error, but now all the split rings are attached and all the loops look pretty much the same. So, all right, let me see what else I need to check. I really should have just kept watching because she's showing how to fix the exact problem that I just fiddled around with and fixed. Oh, that's basically what I did for it though, eventually. It's almost more um, rewarding that I figured out how to do that myself and recognize what the proper orientation of the stitch should be. So like, go me, honestly. Just keep cranking, just keep cranking. Okay, I don't need that part yet. I, I don't have a tube of uh waist yarn yet so let's just keep cranking for a little bit okay close up of the machine moment um i did make a beginner error and i forgot to turn on the <laughs> The row counter so I don't really know how many rows I did I can probably like count but I don't feel like doing that right now but here's what I did I did about like, probably just over an inch of knitting here let me show you what it looks like from my point of view really quick while I'm doing this yeah so that's what it looks like it's pretty cool Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and end it there for this little episode of the vlog. Um, so yeah, I kind of know how to knit a tube now. That's pretty cool. Don't know how to cast off yet. That'll be a, a task for another day because I'm getting hungry and I need to go eat dinner. And I know from Rachel that uh, you should never crank hungry because then you'll end up cranking hangry, so I'm gonna go take care of that. Um, 
So yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. Uh, you can turn on notifications to know when I next upload a video, whether it's a knitting update or another episode in this series. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for joining me. Um, Happy New Year again, since it is the tail end of January 1st here while I'm recording this, and I hope you have a good rest of your day or evening or whatever when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!